Business confidence, according to the South African Chamber of Business, slowed last month thanks to weak trade figures and a poorly performing manufacturing sector. After reaching a high in December last year, May's figure came in at about 100 points or 1.7 index points lower than April. About 220,000 businesses have come clean and registered for the government's small business tax amnesty. That's more than twice what the finance ministry was expecting. The amnesty for businesses with a turnover of less than 10 million rand was launched in August last year and initially closed last week. Hello and welcome to Summit TV. Well, number portability was expected to be one of the biggest changes in the telecommunications industry, but it appears to have been a non-event. Join us just before 7 o'clock when we try to find out exactly what happened. But first up, is Telcom turning on Vodacom? That leads our news this hour. Public service wage talks scheduled for tomorrow have been postponed to Friday. Today, trade unions launched one of the biggest national strikes of the post-apartheid era. It's a move widely seen as spearheading the left's challenge to win control of the ruling African National Congress ahead of next year's presidential elections. Potential ANC and presidential leadership candidate Tokyo Sekhwale has warned African countries not to merely copy others when it comes to accelerating economic development and growth. Speaking as one of the five co-chairs of the World Economic Forum on Africa in Cape Town, Sekhwale took exception to suggestions the continent should be adopting Indian and Chinese strategies. His comment came as a report on African competitiveness found the continent is expected to achieve growth of 6.2% in 2007. Hello and welcome to Summit. I'm Juliet Newell. And good evening from me, Akash Bramdio. Lots ahead here tonight. Join Bruce Woodfield on the Summit Investor as he finds out just what you should be charged for investments. And topping our news bulletin this evening, confusion over the metal and engineering strike. Is it on or is it off? All that and loads more in tonight's show. We start off with the news. There was a lot of confusion today about whether a strike in the metal and engineering sector was on or off. It seems that only one of the two unions involved in the strike have signed a deal. Solidarity says they've signed a wage agreement offer with employers at the bargaining council for a wage increase of between 8 and 9%. Diamond mining powerhouse De Beers may have reaffirmed its monopoly on the industry. A top European court today struck down a decision by the European Commission which forced diamond producer De Beers to stop buying rough diamonds from Russian rival El Rosa. El Rosa is the world's second largest producer. The EU Commission said at the time the move would pave the way for more competition in the supply of rough diamonds. But today the court disagreed, saying the prohibition is manifestly disproportionate. De Beers has told Summit they need to analyse the decision to see what impact it will have. Hello and good evening from me, Juliet Newell. And a very good evening from me, Akash Brambia. Welcome to Summit TV. Well, lots ahead here tonight, including Health Watch with Jane van Rienen. That's in a few hours' time at 9.30. Jane's chatting to one of the country's best experts on diabetes. And then in Retirement Thinking, Julieta Televi talks to Dion Boyson from Sunlam, and that's about what their new report has just revealed. This is Summer Television, and the news is up first. Confidence among South Africa's consumers is easing, but it's still near record high levels. That's because most South Africans expect the benefits of fast economic growth to filter down to them. President Robert Mugabe's government has no intention of stopping its blitz on price hikers. That's according to Zimbabwean state media. Police in the country launched Operation Reduce Prices last week, ordering store managers to immediately slash prices. Well, there is as yet no word on whether unions have accepted government's revised offer to end the strike and the state had given unions a deadline of right now, that's 6pm, to accept its offer. Unions and government negotiators are sitting at the Public Service Coordinating Bargaining Council. 
Hello and welcome to Summit Television from me, Juliet Newell. Well, lots ahead tonight, including how one website has South African companies in a panic about productivity. Let well, we start off with the news. Nobody wants to be in Gideon Gornor's shoes at the moment. He's governor of Zimbabwe's central bank and he's tasked with turning the country's economy around. Now Gornor's warned Robert Mugabe's government that it could choke the country's economy. That's if it goes ahead with its latest plan to ban foreign currency coupons allowing people to get fuel from private oil companies or importers. And finally, it seems there's nothing hotter than Potter on the book market. Spellbound fans have already started staking out bookshops, hoping to get their hands on J.K. Rowling's latest and last Harry Potter novel. And the countdown to one minute past one tomorrow morning is on. That's when Potter's latest adventure will appear on store shelves. How do you handle situations of conflict if perhaps you say to a client, I want to put a bright yellow sofa here? Not that you would, or maybe you would, I don't know, <laughs> bright yellow sofas. What do you do if a client says, absolutely no ways, I can't visualize it, I don't want it? How do you ensure that the end result reflects the personality of the client? Is this important to you? Brian, I'd love to see where you put everything together, where all the creative juices flow. Can we take a peek? Come into my world. where it all happens, where all the ideas come into place and you put it all together. This is Brian's world. Wow, wow, gee, oh, look at this, this is obviously a scheme you're busy putting together for a client. We are working on a beautiful concept at the moment, lots of textures, wall coverings. Would you say that South Africans are finally becoming a little bit more daring with their usage of colour? Absolutely, they are achieving their own identity in the sense of architecture, in the sense of their interiors. They are being far more brave than staying in the creams and beige and the mon um, monochromatic, monochromatic yes, yes. 